So, hello everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, Turning Data Privacy and Compliance into Your Competitive Advantage. So, I'm very happy to be here today. This webinar today should give you an overview about the latest developments and trends in the data privacy landscape in Europe and the US. And to understand that better, uh, what is going on in the market, we need to identify who are the drivers of these trends. And I know in the end, you will ask yourself what you can do now with all of that information, with the knowledge and the understanding of the market. And it's pretty easy because you can start to use that as a competitive advantage. But before we jump right into it, uh, just a few words about myself and also about the company UserCentrix. So my name is Hanna Zorg. I've been working at UserCentrix since 2022 as a strategic partner manager in the platform partnerships team. I completed my Bachelor of Science in Business Informatics in 2018. And after that, I worked two and a half years as an IT consultant in a software company with a focus on M365. Um, just a few words about UserCentrix. Um, so who is UserCentrix? So UserCentrix is a legal technology software as a service provider that enables companies to collect, to manage, and also document user content on websites and apps to achieve full compliance with global data protection regulations and also enabling high content rates and building trust with the customers. So the company was founded in 2012 and we're a medium-sized company. We have employees a little bit more than uh, 220 and uh, we have a global community. So at the moment we have I think more than 900,000 websites that are using our content management solution and we also support more than 46 languages. Um, now I'm always talking about a content management platform solution. So um, don't wonder if I say sometimes CMP, that stands for a content management platform. So um, to understand that better, just give you an example. Uh, whenever you have web technologies on your website, in most cases you are collecting personal data. And these data are of course very sensitive and they require an opt-in. That means whenever um, a user visits a website, then the user has the option to say, yes, take my data, or they can say, I don't want to share my data with you. And if we ha have the case, for example, that the content is given, then the data management platform gets the information and the web technologies can be fired. So for example, Google Analytics, Facebook Pixel, and so on. Uh, long story short, uh, if you're not uh, asking your user uh, for consent, then there are some serious consequences uh, of not taking this data protection regulation seriously. For example, in Europe, the GDPR, um, then you have very, very high fines. But besides that, there's also one of the most important factors, and that's also that you can start to lose trust with your customers, but you can also get a bad image, um, but we will come later to that aspect. Um, before we jump right into it, I always like to create an awareness of how important data are nowadays um, and also how much impact they have. So there are a lot of good things going on um, where data helped us to grow and also handle challenges. For example, data helped us to fight against the pandemic situation. It always helps us to develop new innovations, opening up new business opportunities and so on. But on the other side, um, there is also an abuse of data. And also if we have a look in the past, for example, Cambridge Analytica slash the Facebook scandal in 2016, uh, what happened there? So personal data from up to 87 million Facebook users were forwarded to researchers of Cambridge Analytica without their consent worldwide. And what Cambridge Analytica did was to build up psychological warfare tool, which it unleashed on uh, US voters to help elect uh, Donald Trump as president. So I know that's a hard example, but just wanted to give you a, an overview how much impact the data have and also how they can be used improperly. So also some people say that Cambridge Analytica had an impact on the introduction of the data protection law, um, the GDPR in 2018. And jumping right into this, I always like to show this data privacy map because it gives you directly an overview about how important data privacy is in the world. Um, as I said before, it started 2018 in Europe with the GDPR, continued with the CCPA in 2020, continued with the LGPD in Brazil, PIPL in China, and so on. So there are way more regulations out there. They are not all on that map now uh, because it would be too much. Uh, but just to give you an example, 
but what we can basically see is that data privacy is the new normal. Everybody's talking about it. It's still a very, very important topic and you can't make a way around it. Um, I know that sounds a little bit hard, but if you think a little bit further, you can't make a way around it and you have to bring it into your own vision and mission. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because you can start to use data privacy as a competitive advantage. So also big players are doing that. So let me take the example of Apple. So Apple already started to develop a lot of privacy features like blocking, tracking, pixel and mails, privacy, nutrition labels. I will explain you later what uh, this is about. And they are using that as a competitive advantage. They are uh, they started to build trust with their customers with all of that features. And um, just to give, give you an example. So what I also like to mention here is um, a quote of an analyst of Gartner who said, by 2023 companies that earn and maintain digital trust with their customers will see 30% more digital commerce profits than their competitors. So what I want to say with that, you can start first to extend your existing product portfolio with adding additional products and features like for example, a content management platform. And second, you can also start to increase trust with your customers because if your customer knows that their data is best cared and they know what is done with their data, they are also willing to pay a little bit more, but we will come later to that. So to get in that competitive position, or if you're already using data privacy features, you also need to be aware or always need to be aware of what is going on in the market and also who are the drivers of these trends. So we're going through all of the drivers now in this webinar um, to give you a better knowledge about that. So we at UserCentrix identified main, yeah, like three main drivers. So first we have the regulators, Second, we have the big players and the ongoing technology trends. And last but not least, pretty clear, your customers. So starting with the regulators, uh, why they are uh, very important. I think that's pretty clear because they set the basis of laws and directors out there, such as the GDPR. And of course, they decide how much fines you have to pay. The overall goal of these regulators is I think that's also pretty clear. They want to protect uh, the data privacy of every human because as we all know, data privacy is a human right. Then they want to create this competitive and fair market where also uh, the big players um, and uh, like smaller startups or medium businesses have the same option and requirement. Uh, I know that sounds super nice, but it's sometimes not so easy to implement that in a real world. But uh, yeah, that's our, that is also an overall goal of them. So what we have seen uh, in the last years um, is basically two trends out there. So we are seeing that we have a couple new laws and directives out there, and we're also seeing an increase, uh, increasing number of fines. So if we have a look in Europe right now, what is going on, what is important? So um, maybe some of you already heard about that, but everybody's talking about the European uh, data uh, strategy. So what does that mean? This digital strategy aims to make uh, Europe a leader in a data-driven society. It has five acts and every act has an, a different function for that. So we have, for example, the Digital Market Act, uh, which wants to create this competitive and fair market where also all businesses have the same options and opportunities. Then we have for example, the artificial intelligence, which wants to manage and control AI systems. We'll talk more about that later. And basically what also the, the, the acts want to do is they want to start to transform unused data into new business opportunities and innovations. So I'm not talking here about personal data, but more about industry data. Then besides that, then we have the topic of the data transfer agreement. So um, as we all know, uh, it has a long history. It's about sharing data from Europe to the US because we all know that most of the businesses are using US-based services like Google, Microsoft, and so on. So there was always this discussion about uh, is a third party country also like the US seen as um, adequate to Europe standards or not? And then there was a safe harbor privacy shield 1.0. Don't want to go into detail to that because it shouldn't be like a legal uh, session today. Um, and then there were a lot of negotiations and discussions but uh, finally, on uh, July 10, so last uh, 
yeah, or a couple of weeks ago, uh, the European Commission formally adopted a new adequacy decision uh, on the Europe and US data privacy framework. And the adoption of this adequacy decision follows years of intense negotiations between Europe and US, um, as I said before. Uh, so yeah, let's see. <laughs> then um, besides that, um, because we have so much um, laws out there, you have to be very, very careful because there's also a difference between sometimes the countries and the sectors. So, I mean, if we have a look in Europe, the GDPR is for all countries. But if we have a look, for example, in the US, so if you start to enter a new market, then you have to be a little bit more careful because um, there's a difference, for example, between the states like California, you have different requirements than in Virginia. So, for example, in California, you have more flexible opt outs uh, from the one set, means also allowing co consumers to opt out, uh, also target advertising. Um, and it also, for example, does not cover employee data. But in the CCPA, you have, for example, the consumer data. So we can see you have to be a little bit more careful. And that's also yeah, a challenge sometimes for businesses to be always on that line when it comes to uh, also implementing, uh, for example, the content management platform. And um, yeah. And then last but not least, we saw an increased number um, of fines uh, regarding the GDPR enforcement tracker. We saw that the numbers going up on um, nearly 11 times. So that's insane. So that's around about 208%. And we identified some reasons. So from a business point of view, challenge always is to be fully legal compliance. So as I said before, if you enter new markets, um, for example, you're a website builder and uh, you enter the market US, then you have to, uh, you need to have a, another content management platform uh, than in Europe, then you have to be careful in which states you are positioned and so on. So there's besides the understanding of legal, um, the legal aspect, there's also the technical uh, challenges because if you're processing data, you have to be very careful. And then also from a uh, regulator point of view, uh, of course, they see also that there's an increased number of fines. So they start to create more and more clear guidelines, which also brings us again to the trend with a couple new laws out there. So you can see it's uh, not so easy. So then continuing with our next driver, the big tech player like um, Apple, Google, Microsoft. So I think you all... Uh, already heard of them. <laughs> um, so what they want to do basically is they want to own the market. They are always aware of new regulations about market trends and so on. And what they do is they try to develop new technology that fit in this environment, of course, as I said before, to use that as a competitive advantage. So for example, if we have a look um, at Google Chrome, I think most of you are also using that. To be honest, I'm using it as well. So they have a market share of nearly 70%, which is very, very big. And they also announced the end of what party cookies in the second half of 2024. So you have to start to think about what alternative solutions you can use um, if you're not able to track any more the third party cookies, um, especially in an online marketing world. Um, yeah, the third party cookies are like the most important factor there. So what I want to say here is, or what I want to mention here is that you always should start to follow a proactive approach instead of a reactive one. So revise your data strategy in an iterative way and think about that. So just to give you a few examples, uh, which alternative you can use is, you can start to use, for example, server-side tagging. So what is server-side tagging? So you are the first party, then we have the third party. And in between you and the third party, there's a centralized protected server, and all of the data of your customer are stored on that centralized server. And you have the option to say which data you want to forward to the third party. And you can also do that in a privacy-friendly way, means that you can start, for example, anonymizing uh, the IP address and so on. Then besides that, we have uh, zero and first party uh, data. I will show you in the next slide an example of that. So um, that are very high quality data because you get them directly from your customers. You can also start, for example, to use a white paper that you uh, position on your website. And before the customer downloads that, he has to fill out a form with all of his information. And then we also have, for example, the privacy nutrition label um, means um, that before you download an application, it gives you a couple of information about how your data is created and used. And you will be very 
good informed on a granular, but also a simple uh, way. So I show you later an example of how uh, this could look like. So here are um, some examples about a zero and first party data. So on the left side, you can see a preference management solution, which is also very, very nice because your customers can decide when they want to get notifications. So for example, they tell you, hey, always when you have new fashion updates or recommendations, please um, send me a mail. Or on the right side, we can see that uh, you as a customer, you have the option to say, uh, I always want to have notification when there's my favorite brand out there uh, with the size, um, with the color, white, and so on. And uh, as I said before, it's very nice because you have very high quality data and they are directly from your target audience. Then uh, just to uh, give you an example, because I mentioned that in the beginning as well, um, Apple is a real forerunner when it comes to that because they also use data privacy as a competitive advantage. Um, and they offer a lot of privacy features, which I mentioned before, just to give you an example of that. So nutrition labels, that's what I told you uh, already, where you get all of that information before you download an app, uh, what is done with your data. And it's very, very easy in a simple way. Then we have block tracking pixel and mails um, means that yeah, tracking pixels is um, embedded in mails and that allows a sender to know whenever the message is opened or uh, for example, an image is downloaded and you can see that a little bit like a timestamp. Um, and that's also a very important way for online marketing businesses to track the conversion rate. And then last but not least, uh, we also have, for example, the ATT, so the app transparency tracking framework. Uh, that means it's also more privacy for end users. So you can um, start to choose whether an app can track your activity across other companies' app or websites. Um, yeah, and that's for the purpose of advertising or sharing the data, but you can decide on your own if you want to do that or not. Then um, when we're talking about big players, um, I think also artificial intelligence, so AI is a very important to topic because everyone is talking about it. It's taking a bigger and bigger part in our lives and it's most of the time unnoticed. So we don't really recognize or see it, but um, it opens up a lot of opportunities and chances for businesses. Um, but what I also want to mention here is that it has some risk when it comes to data privacy. So we all know that um, artificial intelligence works with a huge amount of data and often the data contains personal and sensitive information. And the thing is that often users didn't really give their consent or even know that the data is used. So besides all of the challenges, there are uh, uh, chances, there are also some challenges that we have to keep in mind when it comes to AI systems. So. I'm talking about the lack of transparency or maybe also the not given consent. So just to give you an example, do you know where your question flows to when you ask ChatGPT something? To be honest, I have no idea. And um, I think enough said for that. <laughs> so uh, sometimes um, this lack of transparency also can lead to distrust um, because it's not always very transparent what is done with your data or in that case, the questions. Then, um, of course, bias and discrimination. So AI systems are only as unbiased as the data they are trained on. So as I said before, AI uh, works with a huge amount of data. And the thing is, is always the data that they get the single source of truth. I don't know. And um, the thing is that if the data is biased, then the resulting system will, will be true, of course. And last but not least, I think that's also a very important aspect uh, is the ethical ethical uh, aspect and also the protection of uh, children and the minors. So children interact with digital technologies every day, um, but they are not really aware of that these platforms are powered by AI. So to be honest, I'm talking here mostly about social media platforms like TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and so on. And I mean, it's pretty clear because all of that platforms are essential for young people um, because imagine all of your friends are using one of that social media platform and communicating via this. And of course, you don't want to be the only one who feel left out because you also want to communicate it. You start to download the app. Um, then you have some terms and agreements or like legal texts. To be honest, uh, I'm an adult and I still don't really understand what these legal texts are about or I'm also too lazy to read that. 
I think most of you can agree with me. Uh, so imagine you're a child, you just want to communicate with your friends and then you have a lot of text or like just, hey, allow. And then you start, okay, share my data because I don't know what it is about. I just want to be with my friends. So that's the thing. How are children supposed to understand what is being done with their data? So um, yeah, they start to share your, their, their personal data through, for example, automatic tagging, geolocalization about their interests and so on. And there we have the challenges. They share their data. They're not really aware of this. It is, and also how AI works because they start um, to collect the interests of the children, for example, search terms, frequently weird uh, images or videos. And as I said before, sometimes AI is always not the single source of truth, so it also can make mistakes. I mean, that's pretty clear. And then also children can get recommendations of videos that maybe are not for their age, which can be also uh, very risky. So um, just to mention here is AI has a lot of opportunities, but it also has some challenges. And when it comes to minors, um, parents can and must take care of their children and take the responsibility, for example, through communicating, creating awareness of the topics, track the internet behavior and so on. But because of the challenges like this, AI should be always designed with data privacy in mind. So from the first uh, yeah, milestone or from the first point of the project, uh, data privacy should be in the mind uh, of the project and then through all of that processes. But sometimes that's not enough because businesses are maybe not always aware of that. So the government is also taking the initiative to prevent the misuse of data and to protect uh, the personal data when it comes to AI. So for example, as I mentioned before, there's the Europe uh, Digital Strategy and they have one act, the AI Act, so the Artificial Intelligence Act. And that means that company must be able to provide users with clear and understandable information about how their personal data is used. And um, they also evaluate the risks of the tool. So I know that was a lot, but we're coming now to our last driver and that is uh, your customers basically. And I think it's also pretty clear why they are super important because without customers, you have no data and you have no revenue. So, uh, I mean, that's very uh, easy explained in a simple way, but I think you know what I mean. So uh, what we have seen over the last years is that the understanding of privacy has grown so um, people want to know what is done with their data and it's pretty clear because they face the topic every day they do online shopping for example click on a website you see the cookie banner and then they start to um, use their mobile and um, before they download an app then the app asks them like hey do you allow app tracking and so on so they are facing um, all of that every day. And what they do is they start to claim their rights because they're not afraid of asking anymore. They want to have transparency and clarity what is done with the data. So I also have two, um, uh, two quotes of uh, Gartner and McKinsey there uh, who are also um, yeah, telling you like, hey, people want to know what is done with their data. They want to have this transparency, the clarity, and they also want to have privacy in a simple way that they understand what is done. So. Um, as I mentioned before, trust is like the most important aspect when it comes to the driver customers. So what you can do now, you can start to create trust with your customers and use that as a competitive advantage. And it's pretty easy how you can do that because you can do that if you simplify privacy and also to make privacy accessible to everyone. So not just for lawyers who understand legal text, but also like for all of us to understand what is done. So um, just a few um, ways how to simplify privacy. So as I said before, the nutrition labels, uh, to mention that again, I mean, it's also pretty clear because if you have food products, you also want to know what is done, uh, what is in your food product. So you also want to know what is done with your data. Then we also have, of course, cookie banners, like content management platforms. Um, and you can also start to configure them in a good way. So give them uh, a good feeling about that uh, with easy text. Tell them that you value the privacy and um, create the design like your uh, company's brand, like the website. So that you, that you have a better look and feel and um, give them opt out possibilities. Uh, use, for example, if you're not implementing a content management platform on your own, uh, start to use a globally known brand so that customers already know that brand and they know, ah, it's about data privacy. I feel safe. 
And then there are also other approaches like uh, privacy icons. Um, I really like that approach because we have icons about every data related topic and they see just this icon and they know um, how their data is uh, processed and what it is about. Um, and then also comics. So it's always easier to see images and have a visualization instead of a legal text. And also that aspect is very important um, because privacy should be accessible to everyone. It shouldn't be a, a thing that only a few people understand. It should be accessible to everyone because everybody um, um, yeah, is, is uh, responsible for that. So to give you a few examples, so on the left side, you can see, for example, uh, our cookie banner. So as I said before, we have like our uh, CI colors, we have our logo in there, we have some nice texts where we say like, hey, we value your privacy. Uh, we explain them what we want to do. We also have this deny button, but also uh, on the time, uh, size, et cetera, they accept. So it's like balanced. Then on the right side, we have the privacy icon. So then you know, okay, this is about uh, this um, processing of data, this, this, this. And um, I mean, it's in the beginning, but I think it's a nice approach. Then on the left side, we have finally our privacy nutrition labels from Apple. So you can also start to um, try uh, that out if you want. So uh, just if you have an iPhone, uh, you can go into the App Store and see how it uh, looks like. So uh, I also did that and I think it's pretty nice. Or on the right side, also a nice approach, as I told you, the data privacy comic. So there are also not many out there, but it's starting to get more and more. And I think it's really nice because as I said before, it's easier to understand uh, images than uh, text. So I know that was a lot um, and we are already um, coming to an end of this webinar. So you have an overview now about the latest developments when it comes to data privacy and what is going on in the market, who are the drivers. You will ask yourself now what you can do with that information, how you can solve uh, challenges like entering new markets, the end of third party cookies, creating trust with simplifying privacy, making accessible to everyone. And therefore a console management platform can contribute to get a competitive advantage as I said before. So you can start to use a content management platform to enter new markets because the CMP adapts to the given environment. So no matter which country, industry specific standards or uh, laws that apply here. As I said before, you can use to start a famous globally known brand that uh, can achieve a positive image for you and bring you in a better position. Then the aspect of trust, you can start to customize the CMP in a good way. So the CI design, um, then understandable, transparent legal text, what is done with the data. And if they understand that, they will also tend to click more accept instead of uh, directly reject the banner. And this, of course, also helps you to increase revenue and uh, let your business grow. And besides that, also the post cookie area. So you need to start to think about alternative solutions like server side tagging. And also if you use server side tagging, you still use um, need to use a, a CMP to store the data and to process them. So I know a console management platform is a very complex uh, software that has a lot of feature, but it opens up very um, many opportunities. And you don't need to implement it on your own. I can completely understand it, but you can start, for example, to think about using a partnership to accelerate the business. You can start um, using a partnership, for example, reduce uh, the cost of acquisition because you can, for example, benefit from our, um, as an example, retention rate. We have a retention rate over 90%. So if you become a partner, you can benefit from this number, strengthen your customer base and relationship. Then you can also start to generate direct revenue because you add an additional service and feature out there. You can reach out to a new target group. You can start to create uh, this trust aspect because you have now this data privacy feature in your product portfolio. So giving you just some examples why um, this is very important. So on the right side, you can also see like a summarization of, uh, of all of the topics that we have today. So to end this webinar, regularly check what the drivers of the industry are up to, question your current data, uh, current data protection strategy. So think about in which markets uh, you want to position, what are your goals, um, prepare for the end of third party cookies. How can you get data instead of using the third party data with zero first party data? Are you 
using, for example, white paper, preference manage management solution, server set tagging, and last but not least, uh, always generate compliant data and create transparency and trust with your customers. So use a, for example, friendly interface of a CMP to make it a little bit easier to understand what is done with the data. So thanks for your attention. So um, I'm always happy to help. If you have any questions, just reach out to me. Um, you can also connect um, on LinkedIn and uh, I hope uh, you have a wonderful rest of the day. So see you soon. Bye-bye.